Come on, hands up. Come on, you're boxing. Come on. Come on, pressure, pressure, pressure. Come on. Come on, don't stand still. Keep moving. Keep moving. Hard work, dedication and respect. Three attributes taught in every boxing gym in the country. Whether you're a star in the making, a troubled teen, or you just want to keep fit, you'll find most gyms will welcome you with open arms. And this one's no different. Harrogate Boxing Club in Tottenham, set up with the help of the local police force over a decade ago. The aim is to re-engage with the disenchanted youth of this deprived area of North London. This is about a positive, positive role models, getting the kids off the streets into somewhere where, you know, away from the negative influences of the gangs and the street corners and the drinks and drugs. Olympic success put the spotlight back on the sweet science for all the right reasons. Gyms are thriving and it's had a positive impact for both men and women, with some new talent already emerging. The girls are technically very, very good. You know, they're not as powerful as the men, but technically they're just as good, they're just as fast. And a lot of the girls out there that you know, they see this now as that there's another sport that they can get into. Yeah, there's a few um, in there now uh, who started in the summer and they're ready to go out now. So I'll we'll be looking for bouts for them over the next few weeks. It's amazing what a difference a year can make. 12 months ago, the country was ripped apart by riots and now is united by sporting success. Boxing is being used as a positive example to youngsters by MPs and helps to communicate educate and motivate those who want to change. If they come into a boxing club and they never ever finish up having a fight, all they'll learn is good things. I just hope that they, that they, do, have, they do have contests and they do represent this club. If they don't, they haven't done themselves any harm at all, only good. Charlie joins us alongside uh, MP Charlotte Leslie, who's long fought for an increase in boxing for schools and clubs. Welcome. How are you doing, Charlotte? Charlotte, just tell me, what, what, what is it about the boxing that's attracted you? Well, I, I used to enjoy boxing myself. And what's so amazing is you've seen the kids there in the, in the boxing gyms. The year before the Olympics, we had the riots in 2011, and you had mm. lots of kids expending their energy in very, very destructive ways. Now, a lot of those kids, if they were given the opportunity to go into the gyms and boxing gyms and expend that energy in a positive way, they wouldn't have been on the streets. And boxing is amazing at turning kids' lives around in the way that Charlie was talking about on the video we've just seen. Charlie, you box as a youngster yeah. in Brendan's gym now and again, and, and, and you actually box now. Yeah. What, what attracted you to the, to the sport? I think very similar to what Charlotte said in the fact that it gave me so much self-confidence. I had very, very li little self-esteem when I was younger. And I think that, like Charlotte said, there's so much, kids have so much sort of pent-up aggression and feel like quite badly done to. I definitely had a chip on my shoulder and mm. brought up in Sheffield, very working class background. And I think I walked in the gym and I walked in like this and I walked out like that. And that's the significant thing it can really do. Let's look at some stats, Charlotte. 34% of amateur boxing clubs in England uh, run classes specifically uh, for women. There were none in 1994. Interesting stat. Uh, the number of female boxers in Britain has risen from 70 in 2005 to 1,000 in 2011. Do you think the Olympics, the build-up to the Olympics, had a lot to do with this? I think it had a tremendous amount to do with it, but there's been a lot of work going on for a long time. I and mean, when I started boxing as a teenager in the early 90s, I mean, it was really going nowhere, and it was a bit of a, sometimes felt like a bit of a freak show. And if you look at where we are now and the success of Nicky Adams, I mean, I think for me that was the most special moment of the Olympics. On British soil, first ever women's boxing gold medal to be won by a British woman. No wonder the girls are coming into the gyms. It's fantastic to see. All the success stories of the Olympics. She was one of the pin-up girls, wasn't mm. she? She was. That and it was, smile, it was fabulous. So it's so great to see boxing at the forefront of sport because for so long it hasn't been. And what a great ambassador for the sport. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. Charlie, and I think people have seen that and are getting to the gym. Let me give you, Charlie, this, this mad stat. 871 numbered registered boxing clubs. 19,600 women currently participate in boxing, train at least once a week. Uh, 30,100 women participate in boxing, train at least once every four weeks. So, yeah, the, 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 the Olympics has got to have done so much confidence for the women to get involved in Yeah, it in the did. Sport. It's really interesting because at the gym I box out of, which is the Lynn in Camberwell in London, when, before the Olympics, there was me and another person that was sort of getting back into boxing and then somebody that came every so often and that was it. It was very difficult for me to have girls to spar with as well. And now at the gym there is eight 
definite girls that are boxing, they're sparring at the moment, and there's at least 12 to 15 that are coming, but not only just my age, but also in the junior session. It's a mixture of young girls and boys, it's not just boys. And I was talking to the girls, and also the head coach um, at the Lynn was saying that the girls said that they felt very intimidated to go into the gym and scared like they'd be judged, which is true. Like I was judged, and I get judged all the time. People say to me, you box box and it's like no a box and I have to go through the whole rigmarole over and over again and these girls felt so intimidated to go into a boxing gym but they wanted to box and what the Olympics showed was that women can box and that they have the confidence to walk into a gym and say I'm here as a boxer. Joe we've gone down memory lane in ringside with you what about this this is changing times isn't it? It's great I think it's I think it's amazing you know and uh, the Olympics done so much like we said Nick Landon was, what she did there and was, was, was great and uh, yeah, it's brilliant, you know, discipline, um, training, everything that goes into it is brilliant, you know. Charlotte, is the word getting through to the government about the benefits of boxing? I know David Cameron was with you, wasn't he, when you were watching it down he, the XL? He was, and when David Cameron visited Rio, I was thrilled he went to see Fight for Peace and the work yeah. they're doing in the boxing gyms there with Nicky Adams. Slowly it is, but the thing is, the thing I'm trying to drum home is that after the riots, everyone's looking at how to solve antisocial behaviour. We're chucking a lot of money, sometimes, at, you know, very good, I'm not having a go at them, but schemes that often come and go. Meanwhile, you've got boxing gyms which are, you know, there's no such thing as a silver bullet, but as close as you'll ever get to a silver bullet in turning kids' lives around, and they're really struggling. So I'm doing an inquiry to see how we can make sure that money goes to the things that are actually working um, and not anywhere else. Do you think boxing is now spreading throughout the community? It is definitely spreading throughout the community. I mean, the Olympics was a tremendous boost for it. And, uh, you know, what we're doing on ringside now is proving to people that boxing is something that, you know, part of the community can do great stuff. Charlie, Johnny and I came down to the Olympics. I know you were working down there as well to see yeah. Katie Taylor. I mean, that was 10,000 Irish fans in there. It, I think we said it was like Frotch Boutte type atmosphere. I it thought, I, I, I thought, I thought Nicola Adams actually boxed better than yeah. most of the men, yeah. which was... So many people said that, though, when she did, she was beautifully technically boxing like to watch it if you're a boxing fan or not there was no there was no sort of like cattiness that people might think women would do and there was no sort of messy shots that a lot of the blokes did or getting caught in clinches she was so technical she was even like almost going a bit pro boxing bent on shots she did that little shuffle didn't she mm. as well and she was she boxed brilliantly you wouldn't notice whether it's a, a woman uh, you know, wore a bloke, but the atmosphere was incredible, and it was just like a massive pro boxing fight. I mean, you know, I was in Sheffield watching the Kell Brook fight not long ago. The atmosphere was incredible, but that just—I don't think I've seen anything like it. The amount of people that were there it was incredible. Charlotte, is this a, a dream come true, or, or can we expect a lot more to come? I think if you stop dreaming, that's a bad thing. We've done really well so far in the Olympics. You know, as I said, was brilliant. But there's still a lot more to do. I mean, there are time, difficult times are ahead of us. Councils are upping their rent on boxing club premises. You know, the one thing we don't want to see is all this good work getting shut down because clubs don't have the money. So that's, that's part of the work that I'm trying to do. Joe, so they're starting to bring this into boxing into schools now, which is, would you say, was a good idea? I think it's great. I think um, teacher discipline and also children who are bullies gives them somewhere to, something to do. And also kids that are getting bullied because of their confidence. Like when I was young, you know, I had problems in school and, it was brilliant for me to go to, to the boxing gym. It was my escapism to learn to defend myself and to feel good about myself, you know? So I think bringing that to schools would be so great. you say you were bullied as a kid, and, and you two also, you found the boxing mm. gym was the way out, and, and you've all got confidence from it. Yeah, massively. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't through going to a boxing gym and, and doing sport, no way, because it gave me confidence to believe in myself, to aspire, to think I could actually do something. So, you know, you walked into the gym and I actually, like praise is a massive thing. I was praised. Oh my gosh! Like I'm actually good at something, and you know, I actually did something right. And just that little bit of praise can do the, the world of good. I mean, just like uh, what you were saying, Joe. My little brother has started boxing. Mm. He's very, very young, 13, 14. And for him, he's not fighting at school anymore. Mm. He wants to be, you know, go to the gym and, and box and not get messed up in all those other things, which are, you know, there for you. And it's confidence. It's huge for confidence. Yeah. Ter terrific to hear, guys. Now we're off to Nicola Adams' home county next week for a Yorkshireman who had to battle through adversity last time out against American Carson Jones.